What actually happens if you pour motor oil on a running PC? After all, oil submerged PCs are something that are fairly common, but these typically use mineral oil to give off this underwater effect without negatively impacting the PC's ability to function. However, if you wanted to know what happens if you use motor oil instead of mineral oil to cool a PC, the results you'll find are, are mostly speculative. And so, to get to the bottom of what actually would happen if you use motor oil to cool a PC, let's do just that today. I'll preface this by saying, please do not try this at home, but I'm curious what you think will happen to this PC. Do you think it'll keep working when submerged in motor oil or break immediately due to short circuiting or disintegration? And if it does keep working, do you think the PC will get cooler due to being submerged or do you think it'll get hotter due to the, the, the motor oil retaining more heat? As we power on the PC for the first time, we can see that there are some like visual artifacts that we'll have to ignore for the sake of this experiment because those are actually due to freezing this GPU in a previous one and not due to anything motor oil related. So now it's time to whip out a few liters of conventional motor oil. And with that, I think it's time for the moment of truth. Let's go ahead and pour motor oil over top of this running PC. As the motor oil oozes over our components and engulfs our computer, the very first thing to take note of is, well, our PC is not immediately shutting off. This means, of course, that at the very least, motor oil does not conduct electricity. So, so far, we're in the clear. And on top of that, take a close listen at how the oil deafens nearly all of the noise being generated by the PC. That, my friends, is pretty wild. However, that said, as the oil begins rising higher and higher in the fish tank, we do start to notice something peculiar. Take a close look at the fan covering the CPU. As the oil begins to overtake it, the fan almost immediately stops spinning altogether. Every once in a while, you'll, you'll see that it sort of spurs to life for a little bit, but this is actually the fan's safety mechanism at play. You see, when a computer fan is interrupted, like by hitting something or having something jammed inside of it, the motor will actually stop and wait a few seconds before spinning back up again to, well, try again. And well, in our case, it appears the motor oil is so viscous that the added resistance is enough to trigger this pause mechanism. You can see the same thing happening over on our GPU as well. Meaning that within this oil, our fans are uh, effectively not effective. And yet, despite all of the fans running at like a fraction of the time in RPM as normal, well, let's actually rewind and, and take another close look, but this time at the CPU temperature during the pour. As soon as the motor oil hits the computer, there is a noticeable drop in temperature. That is actually crazy how, how apparent that is. Granted, this is like the immediate short term, but right out of the gate, the motor oil does cool our PC quite effectively. This certainly highlights the fundamental difference in the thermal conductivity between gases and liquids and shows the benefit of using motor oil to pull heat away from the core components. Here, however, we, we do have our first real conundrum, though, because despite the PC actually running cooler when submerged initially, the motor oil, again, is also preventing our fans from freely spinning to further move all that heat around. And so what could end up happening is that once the oil reaches its max heat capacity, the, the most amount of heat that it can store within it, we, we may notice the CPU temperatures begin to rise because that heat doesn't have anywhere else to go. But to put that to an actual test, let's go ahead and, and put our PC under some load to generate additional heat. And after playing video games on this for a little bit, I am pleasantly surprised by how well the computer is able to maintain its cooler temps. At least up until this point, functionally using motor oil in our PC seems to be on par with, say, using mineral oil. And even aesthetically, I think it's way cooler and makes for a, a, a much more unique desk upgrade. But with that said, longevity here is still something of concern. Before we find out which components, if any, are negatively affected by prolonged motor oil immersion, let's first take a look at a far more practical desk upgrade from today's video sponsor. Anchor. This is the Anchor Prime TB5 docking station, the first of its kind to deeply take advantage of the increased transfer speeds of Thunderbolt 5 technology. It features a Thunderbolt 5 upstream port here that connects to high-performance laptops like the new MacBook M4s while delivering 140 watts of high-speed charging, all without requiring a separate power brick that you see in, in most other docking stations. The pair of Thunderbolt 5 downstream ports here are useful for peripherals, allowing for multi-monitor setups, taking advantage of Thunderbolt 5's ability to support dual 8K60 
Hertz displays. These also enable 80 gigabit per second per Thunderbolt port and a total of 128 gigabits per second transfer across multiple ports. Meaning that if you paired this with the Thunderbolt 5 enabled SSD, your transfer speeds are going to be crazy quick. And on top of all of that, there's also a handful of USB-A ports, USB-C ports, a dedicated Ethernet port, HDMI 2.1 or DisplayPort 2.1 for output as well, and finally, even some SD card readers and an audio port, making this, what, a 14 in one dock? If that's still not enough, there's also a built-in fan with intelligent temperature control to ensure that it kicks on when needed to stay cool. And of course, how could I forget about the RGB? So if you're looking for a docking solution for a higher-end laptop like an M4 MacBook, you should check out this TB5 docking station from Anchor. To learn more about this, you can simply search for Anchor Prime TB5 right now, and if you buy one of these right now, you can also participate in a quiz for a chance to win a mystery box from Anchor as well. So I'll leave some information about that in the description down below. But now let's go check in on our motor oil PC. All right, so at this point, our motor oil PC has been kind of just chilling in my garage for the better part of a couple weeks now. And so to test its longevity of if any of these parts did actually disintegrate over, over time, let's go ahead and power this on to see if we can still get it to boot. Now, I will say that aesthetically, having a motor oil PC is, is honestly kind of cool. Compared to a mineral oil PC, which you know, it's a very clear light liquid. This motor oil being this dark, dense, just kind of like black box, it's it's kind of a vibe. Granted, maybe like a black lagoon kind of vibe, but, but still definitely a vibe. That said, you can still see through the liquid, so it isn't completely, you know, blacked out, which, which would be a really cool build. Maybe we'll have to do that in like the next video. But let's go ahead and see if this still works, and then we'll discuss some of the potential downsides of using motor oil. But okay, will a motor oil PC still function after a few weeks of being submerged. Honestly, the po the components look physically fine, but we'll see if we can get this to boot again. Oh, boom, just like that. To be fair, maybe a couple weeks isn't long enough for the disintegration effects to take place, if those even exist at all. But what that does mean is that this computer still works after being submerged for this long, which is kind of cool. Remember that these visual artifacts are not from the motor oil, but are instead from a previous experiment with uh, with this GPU, and same with all like this dustiness. We do a lot of wonky tech tinkering experiments on this channel, so if you're interested in this kind of stuff, please follow along for more. And actually, it looks like the CPU fan is constantly spinning as opposed to doing that stopping and starting action. So that is a good sign. Although, as you can see over here, the GPU is still, you know, doing that stopping mechanism. Oh, it did just turn off. Is it just, okay, it's just rebooting. But at this point, I think it's time to talk about some of the downsides of using motor oil to cool your PC. The first being, uh, ventilation. Typically when you're using your computer or even if you're using a mineral oil PC, you don't have to worry about, you know, being in an enclosed space or getting fresh air into your environment. With motor oil, that's a different story. And so if you say had this PC inside of your like traditional gaming room with like an enclosed space inside of your house, you don't really want to just be like breathing this in constantly throughout an entire night. One thing that we could do is encase this fish tank so that only the wires were exposed and that the oil was well, more contained. That would hypothetically like reduce the amount of fumes that we could smell from the oil. But that goes hand in hand with the next issue, which is, well, you're not also supposed to be like touching motor oil for exposed periods of time either. And so that makes it extremely difficult to do any type of upgrading and or troubleshooting for this kind of PC. If this didn't work the first time, I really wouldn't have wanted to like take out these components to, to try to fix it. You can see here on the back of the motor oil, it says avoid prolonged or repeated skin contact with used motor oil. So I guess one could argue that this is not used in an engine, it's just used in like a computer. But even still, that is not something that you have to deal with with mineral oil if you if you did a submerged PC with this instead, because this is food grade. You can, honestly, you could like eat this and it's fine. Also, you can see here, this is also odorless, unlike the motor oil. That is kind of an, like an overlying issue with oil submerged PCs in general though, is upgrading is kind of out of the picture unless you wanna make a giant mess. And God forbid if you accidentally forgot to plug something in, like here, for example, I have the power button, which if you forgot to plug that in, it, it submerged this in oil, that would be a huge pain in the butt. And honestly, in my experience with oil PCs, the, the oil actually kind of creeps up uh, along all of the cables that are exposed since you still need to plug those into something. And completely cleaning oil off of components is, I, I will also, I'll just say impossible. It's typically never worth going through the process of cleaning off all these components once they've been submerged. So this really is just kind of the fate for the rest of these components' lives. Although that does bring up the biggest challenge of using motor oil for a PC. 
PC, and that's disposal. Because, well, you can't just, you know, throw motor oil away, especially used motor oil. You can't just pour down a drain because it's awful for the environment. Instead, there are all these guidelines of how to, like, recycle motor oil back at places like AutoZone or Advanced Auto Parts. So, you know, uh, it's not just super easy to, to take this apart and do something else with it. All of that said, though, if we go back to the initial question, can you use motor oil to cool a PC? And the answer is yes, you for sure can. And in fact, motor oil is quite a bit cheaper in volume compared to mineral oil. So if you're looking for like a cheap alternative, motor oil obviously does not destroy a computer within the first month or so. But stay tuned for updates as we continue this experiment over time. That said, would I recommend this? Well, the answer again is kind of obviously no. There's a ton of downsides, as we've just mentioned, that make this kind of inconvenient to, to have around and, and to deal with. So if you are looking for a substance to submerge your PC in, mineral oil is a clear winner over motor oil in terms of just like ease of use, but functionally, they do both work, which was the whole goal of today's video. So with that, that's all I have for you today. If you have any other burning questions that require these kind of tech tinkering experiments, let me know in the comments down below, and I would love to try to find the answers to them. As always, I've Mr. Easter, your tech tinkerer, and I'll catch you in the next one. Aw, oh, yeah.